Well, joining me now is ANU's astrophysicist and cosmologist, Brad Tucker. Brad, welcome. What should we expect to find out of all of this? Yeah, as you said, a lot of this is what ingredients were present four and a half, four billion years ago. Earth, Venus, all these places have changed a lot in that time. Asteroids remain these kind of frozen capsules in time. The stuff that went into our universe, our, our solar system, has pretty much stayed there. So if we see the abundance of rocks, the ratios, are there amino acids? Are there other things on this asteroid that can then tell us what stuff was present in those ratios when our own Earth was formed? You know, there's a big question. How did this spark, how did life arise on Earth? One of the ideas is maybe an asteroid brought those key ingredients and gave us that spark. Studying this will kind of give us those clues into some of these really big questions. And so what, what do you then glean from that? I mean, you know, let's say it points us in the right direction. We've got a better idea than, than we did. That's obviously not the end of the question. Where do we take it from there? Yeah, look, because, you know, you naturally then say, well, why did it evolve then on Earth if these asteroids are common, if these asteroids are in the inner solar system where Venus and Earth and Mars are in particular? Well, this should have happened on those planets. So is there life there? Could it have happened there? So there's kind of this buildup of questions that we get. There's a little bit of a second issue here as well, though, with these asteroids are called Apollo class. They cross the path of the Earth. They become near the Earth. And by coming near the Earth, um, they pose a hazard. You don't want their path around the sun to intersect ours at the same time in space. Mm. So if we need to defend ourselves against it, we want to know the densities, the composition, so we can build a mission to knock it off course, which we've demonstrated we can with the DART mission last year. Well, what are the chances of something like that actually happening? Because I was reading last week uh, about an asteroid by the name of Bennu with, uh, with two Ns that uh, is now predicted, you know, could perhaps be on course with Earth in about 156 years, I think it is, and they're saying that if that would happen, it could potentially wipe out a, a space the size of Texas. Um, a, is that likely? And B, how would we stop it? That's, you know, so Bennu, which is this asteroid we just visited, that's right, September 24th, actually. So, you know, 158 years from now. There's others, Apophis, all of these come near the Earth. Now, none of them are coming anywhere near us in the next couple of hundred years, 150, 200 years, but near enough. So we do know it's going to happen. We do know based on the past history, these things have hit. And we do know based on statistics in the future, they will hit. So it's not a question, a matter of if, but when, not to be too dramatic. So even though it's not going to be probably in the near future, um, you do want to build a mission that can. And what the DART mission showed last year is by sending a, a probe to essentially smash into an asteroid with enough force, you can alter the path of that asteroid by nudging it. You kind of nudge it away from its trajectory and therefore mm. nudge it away from Earth. So it is now possible, but obviously you want to design it better by knowing, again, those densities and what it's made up of. So the material, the force and angles are designed with the most impact and the most force to be applied. So we're getting there in terms of planetary protection, but it does start with knowing what we're protecting against. Oh, well, look, you know, with all of these things, it's what you don't know is what you want to know. And uh, hopefully we can learn a bit more out of this and it won't be uh, the last of these projects to go on because if we can answer these questions, well, there's a lot more to come. Brad, thank you so much for joining me tonight.